Native Hawaiians have worshipped her for hundreds of years. They believe she assumes human form, wanders the forests of the island, then quickly returns to her home, deep within the earth. In the heart of the Kilauea volcano lives the goddess Hele. Beware, she has quite a temper. Hawaii is alive with fire. For 14 years, Kilauea has blanketed 37 square miles of this tropical paradise with hardened lava as much as 80 feet thick. Towering at 4,000 feet, the mountain has produced enough new rock to pave a two-lane highway that could circle the globe 50 times. This is the world's most active volcano. At the foot of Kilauea was once a picture postcard town with a pristine black sand beach fringed with lush coconut palms. Todd and Mary Dressler thought they were living a dream. Kalapana was the most beautiful place and it was the best kept secret because everybody really took care of each other. It was like everybody was one big family. I hadn't locked my house in 10 years. And that's how special that place was. January 3rd, 1983, Kilauea erupts with a vengeance. The powerful blast creates an open pipeline for the red-hot liquid rock that makes its way toward the Dressler's home. My mom called me up at about 3 o'clock in the morning, and she said, look out the window. And I looked against the wall of my bedroom, and it was glowing bright orange. You knew eventually that it was going to get everybody. Lava oozes down the mountain and across the main road. It burns through the asphalt, then takes aim at Kalapana. Kilauea generates enough lava to fill 3,000 railroad cars a day. to pack up the things that meant a lot to us, which was all our children's pictures and all the pictures on the wall. So they boxed up their lives and prepared for the worst. And it was probably one of the most emotional days of our entire 10 years of watching the volcano because Todd and I actually built that house from floor level up. Todd takes out his video camera and records the final images of the house he and Mary love. It actually burned our next door neighbor's home without us even realizing it because there was so much forest between our neighbor's home and our home. It took almost five years to build. I did most of the work myself and I had a lot of help from my friends in the neighborhood and uh, came up beautiful. We knew it was just a temporary situation and uh, that uh, eventually we were going to lose our home. We just didn't know how long it was going to be. But I think many of us were in denial. We would just take a street or two and then stop again. I don't think anybody had, anybody comprehended that this entire community would be taken out and the entire town would be gone. Maureen attempts to pacify the fire goddess with a traditional peace offering, a bottle of gin. Pele shows no gratitude. I still think I'm going to wake up tomorrow in my bedroom and everything's going to be here. And I don't know what's going to happen when I wake up and it's not. It's going to be hard. It's going to be real hard. It was about 8.30 in the morning 
when Todd came to get me and said, Mary, I want you to join me. The lava is just about ready to touch our home. It happened so quickly. It was a feeling that was just unbelievable. I almost felt it was the end. I had never experienced a fire before, but watching something that you created and you put all your blood, sweat, and tears in, it was uh, very hard to watch it go. Ten years to finish, 20 minutes to watch burn down. It's amazing. Haley threatens all who dare to tread on her sacred land. No one is safe from her wrath. Volcanologists race around the clock, conducting dangerous experiments in hopes of predicting what she is planning to do next. Scientists from the U.S. Geological Survey are America's chief volcano watchers. One of their primary jobs is to monitor a mountain's growth, then warn civilians of impending danger. Dr. Carl Thornburr is the staff geologist at the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory and a 20-year veteran of the USGS. He and his associate, Elizabeth Miura, head to Kilauea's rim to see if trouble is brewing. He has allowed us to accompany him on this dangerous mission so we can get a rare look inside the bowels of an active volcano. This is extremely fragile ground. Huge portions of the rim have recently broken away and fallen into the crater. According to Dr. Thornburg, the unstable rim could collapse at any time. I don't think the cone's going to last much longer. And at some point soon, I'm going to have to draw the line about coming up here and working on the edge. As we walk out forward to these cracks, uh, which are widening from week to week, uh, then we're in an area that uh, potentially could collapse. In the event that you start hearing a rock slide, you want to beat it in a northeastward direction. That's about the safest way to go, and you want to be fast. Now, as we approach the rim here, we've got to do it really cautiously. Wow, there's the pond. Looks like the pond is very active. It's at a depth of about 70 meters below the low point on the crater rims. The lava pond beneath our feet is, uh, is at uh, 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit or more. That's more than five times hotter than you can get your kitchen oven. This eruption has been continuous for 14 years now and continues to threaten residential areas here on the island of Hawaii. There's no way you can go down into this crater and sample this lava firsthand, like with, with sampling devices. There's, there's no way to get down, there's no way to get out. You can't lower in in a helicopter, the fumes are, are too heavy and too noxious. You cannot get any closer than we are right now. In order to safely gather lava samples, Dr. Thornburn takes us down to the lava fields at the base of the volcano. There he finds a skylight, which reveals a river of molten rock flowing through one of the volcano's many subterranean tubes. When you're sampling lava, usually the, the simplest methods are the best. In this case, we have a cable with a hammer on the end, and then pull the, the sample out and rapidly quench it in water. Okay, we're in. After the lava flows through miles of tubes, it finally lands in the ocean, where it is eventually cooled by seawater and hardens into new land. The current Kilauea eruption has added nearly 400 new acres to the big island of Hawaii.
One day in the distant future, the people of Hawaii will be able to live on this land. This is all that remains of Kalapana village today. Todd and Mary use surveyor's marks to find their property, which is now buried under a mountain of solid rock. It's unbelievable to look out and see nothing but black lava for miles. You know, the only way to describe it is as if someone had nuked your neighborhood. There's like nothing that is the same. It's gone. 